I'm Adam Moz, and this is Moz Models. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about flight modes and some of the extremely powerful things you can do with flight modes in Ethos. Now, what is a flight mode? And the concept is very similar. A flight mode is nothing more than a way to tie a whole bunch of settings across the radio to a single switch or single item that activates. You'll notice uh, I've got the countdown uh, timer going here. Uh, let's see, what is my reset? I forget what my reset is on this one. But, uh, this is a DLG. Uh, this is a DLG model. It's a uh, it's called a Vibe. You can see a little picture of it. Uh, kind of funky uh, wing layout. And this is one of the most complex flight mode setups I've done so far. Now, with the idea, a flight mode can be used to trigger logic as an input to a logic switch, as a active condition for mixes. And mixes are special with flight modes. They're a little bit, you can do a little bit more than you, you can anywhere else with flight modes. Typically a flight mode is on off, but a mix can actually be assigned to an active condition of multiple flight modes. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, the other thing is your trims. Each of the six trimmers on the X18, each of the four trimmers on the X20 and so on and such forth for all the other radios can have an independently stored value per flight mode. And that is one of the most critical uses of flight modes is to have different trim in different flying conditions. Uh, particularly for something like a DLG where I'm going to want to have a very different elevator trim for when I'm floating around in dead air just barely hanging as to when I'm got it in speed mode and it's uh, coming back super quick and I've got about five, six, seven more clicks of down trim in that situation and I don't want to have to retrim it every time I switch between the two flight modes. The other key piece in Ethos, and this is like OpenTX, is a flight mode can be triggered by any true false condition in the radio. So you can have a flight mode that's triggered that comes on based on the status of your throttle cut, based on any of your logical switches. Anything that can be true false can trigger a flight mode. So you can do some really cool stuff and I'm going to show you some of that stuff that you can do on this model because what I've done some pretty darn cool stuff on with this one. So first off, where are your flight modes? Go to model, it's the number three one here. Four. Then you've got your FM0, which is your default flight mode. That's your lowest priority flight mode. There's always an FM0 in every model. You can't get rid of it. If you're not using flight modes, you're in flight mode zero. You can name them, the names show up everywhere. Then. You can see here, I have six additional flight modes, flight mode one through flight mode six. And one of the key pieces to note is you can have multiple flight modes active at one point, the highest one on the stack. So is the active flight mode. And I'm gonna show you that because I've done one thing on this. So you see how I pull the, I'm pulling the switch up here and it goes to launch and it goes to zoom, and then if I push over it's cruise, but if I've got my throttle stick down, I'm in landing mode when I go here, zoom, it goes to cruise too. And then when I, when I bring up my flaps, the reason for that is getting into how DLGs work. Uh, the reason I've done it this way, cruise two has my flaps locked up. Um, so if I'm doing a quick turnaround and I grab it, I go into launch mode, the flaps are track, I throw it. When I push over at the end of the launch, it doesn't automatically drop my flaps back down because I forgot to put, it, put up the flap stick. Instead, I go into cruise two, which locks them up and it yells at me, or at least it's supposed to. I forgot to set up the call out. Well, that's something else entirely. See, I, have a number of different active conditions for this 
and you can see here, so my launch is triggered off, off SF down, which is right here. And my speed and thermal, which are my lowest priority ones, are on switch B. Okay, so you'll notice with speed active, if I pull launch, launch overrides, even though the speed switch is still true, and then when I let go, it goes to zoom, not back to speed, and finally when I exit zoom, only then does it go back to speed mode, whichever one I have selected here. And I'm using flight mode priority to do that. Because launch and zoom are higher up on the stack, they're a higher priority than speed. And I'll just show you, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this one, and yes, you can move them. So now, speed, speed. is a higher priority than zoom. So I go to launch, overrides, speed. and it drops back to speed, which is not what we want here. But it doesn't go to zoom because speed's a higher priority. It's higher in the stack. This is a key, key feature for doing complex items with flight modes in ethos because you can eliminate a lot of the programming you'd have to do where you're trying to make sure that each um, each active condition is true if you're doing anything other than just straight switches for active conditions you uh, you have to if these were just non-priority, you'd have to make sure that each condition is unique, and when one condition is selected, it deactivates the other condition. You don't have to. You just have to consider what's the priority. Which one do you want to override? Which other one? That can make the programming way easier if you lay out your priority stack right. And if you don't, you can play with it, because unlike OpenTX, you can just move these suckers around with the move. That's one of the things that's just made it so much easier for me to set, set stuff up here. I'm going to show you, you notice it went into zoom, and then if I push over my, um, my elevator, that's when I'm pushing out. So zoom is in DLG, is the climb out after you throw. That's your zoom. And then when you get right to the top, you just push the nose down. And that's the point I want it to exit zoom. So I've done a couple of cool things with my logic switches there and you'll notice I have oh a bunch of logic switches so zoom is it's a sticky what it does launch, is when I pull launch it's uh, it goes active when you pull launch so sticky on condition is FM1 so I'm using the flight mode launch to trigger zoom the zoom logic switch being tricky. And then I've got a second logic switch called exit zoom, and that is when the elevator is greater than 30%, so that's up elevator, by the way. Up elevator is above zero, down elevator is below zero. You'll notice it pushes, and exit zoom, and that deactivates that sticky. Same thing, cruise two. Um, I haven't named my LS6, I so probably should. So that goes true. If uh, landing mode is active, or if the landing, sorry, the landing uh, logic switch, that triggers landing mode, but that also, um, I use that to trigger LS6, which turns on my cruise 2, which is my, my uh, safety, and that's a sticky, and when landing goes inactive, it deactivates. So that's, again, if if I'm doing a quick turnaround in DLG, where you just you catch the airplane, you go to th you pull launch, you go to throw it. This is to make sure I don't accidentally redeploy the, the huge, huge flaps on this airplane when I push over. And um, I'm not even sure what that last one does. Not SG up. Oh. So LS7 is triggering callout. So when exit zoom is triggered, Speed. and I have SG not up, it's going to re... I've got a uh, special function. 
and it'll go down here. That's actually a couple of one. And you can see they're broken right now because I've been swapping around receivers so my telemetry is all messed up. I gotta go reassign all my, my telemetry. But when SG is not all the way up, that will read out my altitude on, on pushover. And I, so that I know how high I threw the airplane. I'm just using the, the flight mode to trigger this. Um, DLG, it's very, your performance is pretty dependent on how high you can throw the airplane. So this is when I'm training. I've got a uh, TWGR6 in the aircraft. Uh, when I throw it and I push over, it reads out the altitude and tells me how well I threw the airplane. And I, to be honest, suck at throwing. I throw around 100, 120 feet. Uh, which is nothing. Uh, the top end guys throw 200 plus. Some of them can approach 300 feet. Uh, they're also using better airplanes than me, but that's neither here nor there. Now I'm going to show you a couple other things about flight modes. First off is in your trims. Each trimmer, all six of them, have independent trim for flight mode on or off. You'll notice I've got rudder on here. I've got elevator on here. The throttle on here. I don't know why I'm not using it. I've got aileron off. The reason for that is very simple. My aileron trim is not going to change between flight modes. All my flight modes in this aircraft are around the flap and camber settings and the elevator setting. Um, I don't even know why I turned it on for rudder. It doesn't actually matter. It, sh it doesn't need to be on. I should actually go and on this one, let's go turn rudder off. Throttle's not doing anything in this case. I don't have a throttle trimmer assigned. Um, unless I've, I might have set up camber on throttle trimmer. But aileron is off. Because the aileron, it's your, bal it's your uh, roll balance. That doesn't change. Your pitch does because I'm changing, between flight modes, I'm changing the position, the camber of the, uh, of the wing. Each of those needs a different elevator trim to fly level. And camber, uh, for those who aren't aware, is the, uh, the flapperons on this model are huge. Camber is the rest position. So you've got in cruise, you've got it even with the, even, it's even with the wing. In thermal, it'll drop down a little bit. So I camber up the wing, the plane flies slower, but floats. In speed, it clicks up from neutral, which is called reflex, and that allows, that actually reduces the drag, it also reduces the lift, allows the aircraft to move faster. And the speed range on a DLG is quite large. I can easily get well over 100 kilometers an hour in a dive, They're quite zippy, and it'll float around at a ridiculously slow stall, stall speed. Uh, if you go look at YouTube videos of DLG flyers, the good guys, you'll see them, they'll catch the wingtip uh, the throwing peg on the wingtip and, and throw it again in competition uh, for, for a quick turnaround. Uh, and the way they do that is they've got the, the aircraft is coming in just so slow with the flaps down, it's barely moving. You grab it, and you go into your launch mode, which will retract the flaps, and then you'll throw it and you'll come out of that in your zoom mode, which is, has reflex to minimize the drag on the climb up. Yeah, it gets complex. The other piece is we're going to just go and look at a mixer, and I'm going to, I've got, I've got, I'm just going to add a free mix here. So you'll notice two things. First off, active condition can be a flight mode, and that'll pick one. If you want an active condition, this mix is only active on one specific flight mode. That can be the way to do it. Always on. The other thing you can do is there's a flight mode line. If you want this to be active in multiple flight modes, but not all of them, you can go through the, the flight mode box and you can check which modes your mix is active in. I will warn you one thing. If you add a new flight mode, it's going to be selected by default. So if you don't you've got a mix that you don't want that you want to control specific flight modes and you go and you add a new flight mode. Go cross-check your mixes because that new flight mode will be active by default in the flight mode section. 
So you could just say turn this mix off in cruise 2 and landing. Now I've got a mix that is only active. You'll see active condition is always on. And that's pretty much that. Now we'll go and we're just going to delete this mix. And that really is flight modes. Of course, you can use them. I've shown you input as a logic switch. You can see how I've got each of them. Uh, I've got a play track for each of them so it reads out back to me which flight mode I'm in every time I switch flight modes. That's critical for a lot of more complex setups where you really need to know the plane will behave very differently in speed mode than it will in launch mode, for example. And that's really it. Um, flight modes, they're, they're extraordinarily powerful, but at the base, they're actually quite simple. Um, I will just go back and we're going to show you one last time a rather more simple application of flight modes, which is in the mall. Okay, set my throttle to idle. Uh, that's one thing you got to get used to. Sailplane guys, that's your spoiler stick idle. Pull down to pull, pull them down. The throttle all the way down to your idle position. So let's go look at what I've done for flight modes here. And it's very simple. I've done two flat positions on SC. Because we're going to go get into... We'll just see the edit. Um, what you can see here is the, you know, in here you've got the name for your flight mode, your active condition, what triggers it, and a fade in and fade out. Now, fade in and fade out can be very useful when you want a two flight modes that have distinctly different settings to, to fade between the two. So rather than getting an abrupt change in, say, the camber position, it fades from one to the other. Uh, this can actually cause, if you don't do this, you can actually have some very interesting behavior in the air. Now you do have to be careful about this because if you've got mixers that are triggered per flight mode, they may go in active and change the default start position before the fade happens. So, this is a very powerful capability. Be very, very careful how you use it because you can have some really strange stuff happen if you've got some settings that are controlled directly by the fade, which is anything that's flight mode specific, and some that are controlled by the currently active flight mode condition. Because the condition will change is, is a true false. So that can change instantly. And then you're fading. Suddenly it's start point changes. And that start point will get you every time. I've seen a number of setups where they're using flight modes in two different ways to trigger stuff. They throw a fade in there and all sorts of weirdness breaks out. Be very, very careful about how you use fades. You have to use them consistently, and you have to have everything directly on a flight mode, i.e. as opposed to having a condition on a flight mode, a secondary control based on flight mode, or weirdness will happen with fades. And the other piece is, is there's a nice little readout of your trims so that you can see what are the trims for that flight mode. Um, it's not, we don't have relative trims yet. Uh, that's a really cool feature in OpenTX where you can have one flight mode reference another flight mode's trim uh, for a certain setting. So for example, I could set my a Cruise 2 trim, in this case where I've got that Cruise 2, I could force it so that it uses FM0 Cruises trims for everything. Or I could set it so that it's relative to cruise, like I could take my thermal and say that's cruise plus. So say 
elevator becomes cruise plus four, if I retrim cruise, the, I just retrimmed my thermal mode as well with the additional offset that I've trimmed in on thermal um, so that I maintain the difference. I, this, that's actually really useful if you've got, if, you, if it's a really hot day and you go out there, everything's out of trim, you go and this, especially for a sailplane where you've got so many flight modes, you've got so many different trim points, these offset trims, you can, uh, you, you can just set it up. So you trim out your, you throw it up, throw the plane up, trim out your cruise and all your other modes are just about dead on because they're an offset from cruise mode rather than an actual, uh, in fully independent trim. And that is one of the things I do miss that from OpenTX. There's an open issue for it. It's going to come at some point. It's not there yet as of 148, which is what we're running here. But there you have it. Flight modes in a nutshell. They're complex, they're powerful, and they're simple. Uh, it's just a collection of settings all tied to a notional mode, which is a priority stack. Things to remember, it's a priority stack. So the top one that isn't FM0 is always active. If none of them are active, FM0 will be active. Second piece, independent trims per flight mode. Third piece, flight modes are true false values that can be used anywhere in the system that you can take a true false value. Use them in a mix, use them to pick rates, use them to pick anything else. And because this is ethos, Remember that you can mix and match how you're triggering stuff. You can have some rates that are triggered by logic switches, some rates that are triggered by switches, some rates that are triggered by flight mode, all working together as you need them. You can have a really nice low rate flight mode, just cruise mode, fly around, and set it up so you bang, if you bang your sticks into the corner, you still get a full rate snap roll. Uh, that's something that, uh, that can be implemented. I'll walk you through a snap roll switch uh, in a future video, but uh, that just can be a lot of fun. You can do some amazing things with it, but at the end, end of the day, it's just a priority stack of true false values with the fate. The only thing that they do special is the fade. And like I said, be careful with the fade you can get yourself in trouble if you don't test everything thoroughly on the ground first. And that's true for any programming. Test it on the ground, not in the air. Do not ever put something up in the air that you have not walked through the entire set of programming on the ground. You will pay for it if you do that. Okay, uh, that's it for uh, this video.